Welcome back, I'm DRN and this is Mechabellum, a 1 vs 1 auto battle with giant mechs blasting each other to bits with lasers and rockets. We're playing in this week's tournament, and we just got absolutely annihilated. I got my first perfect game loss in forever. Hopefully we can bounce back, if we lose another game we are out. Here we go. We're going up against This Is Fine with a good amount of combat power and a cheeky icon that makes it look like he's abandoned when he hasn't. The tricks people try to get cheeky wins. I respect the attempts at the bamboozle, but I'm here for a good game, not a cheeky win. Hmm, once again no tanks, but all the economy options except for giant offered to us, wow. We just played a game of Fang Phoenix where we got annihilated, so I want to redeem myself by playing it better. Our opponent is Speed Specialist with tanks and fangs. He's probably going to be aggressive then, because Speed Specialist is great at pushing for towers really fast. This time round we're going to have the fangs further back. We're thinking ahead and leaving space for a set of crawls horizontally behind the tower to make the classic T formation. A gap of three either side, so a missile can't kill them all too easily. And where do you go? I'm happy with you there, actually. And we're gonna have turn one chaff clear this game, come on. I'm still annoyed about the last game. For you it's been a whole day, for me it's been ten minutes. So the lessons learned there are fresh in my mind. On the bright side, it doesn't have any stone crawlers yet. Right, are we good? Hmm, hang on. Another mistake we made last game was poor positioning around one. Are we sending these arc lights to their doom? No, they'll be fine. Tanks are even slower, and by then fangs will be at the front row. Right. Ooh, nice. He's got the T formation. Very wide tanks. Which is really unlucky for them. Our Phoenix is pouncing straight on them. <laughs> That's gonna be half his tanks gone ten seconds into the round. Almost forgot to say good luck, have fun. I was too busy ruminating on the last game. Yeah, it just shows the importance of positioning. Because now his turn two plays can be fangs in front of those to cover them. While we get to be proactive, small mistakes really do get punished in this game. Which I guess makes sense, because you've both got the exact same set of tools in the box. Oh, so annoyed about the last game. For you it'll be yesterday's news, but for me it was just ten minutes ago. <laughs> and I spent the whole time thinking about it. Right, head in the game we're currently playing, don't get stuck in the last one. Ooh. Do we take intensive training? It'd be really good for him, getting those tanks straight up to level 2. Deployment module's good, missile's good, even mass-produced fortress can win games. If he missiles, he's going to missile some of our phoenixes and we can't save them. Hmm, I think we've got the extra money because we're supply specialists, so we should probably play the intensive training. Do I want to go deeper into Arclight? Not really. It's a bit of a meme build and I think I've failed the last three times I've tried it. I'm quite happy grabbing some extra crawlers and finishing off our T's. What do they say when you're being conscientious? Crossing your T's and dotting your T's. Well, this is definitely crossing our T's. Ooh, maybe we can save these phoenixes. Oh no, we're 100 short. If I could get the tower upgrade for health, I could have got them over 3,000 health and they would have lived. It's one of the last remaining breakpoints, is level 2 phoenixes. Without tower upgrade, they die to the missile. With tower upgrade, they survive it. It's fine. He may missile the other set instead. Oh, that's a shame. But it's cost him the intensive training, or we have it, he doesn't. And at least he doesn't get the experience for killing them upon to a single unit. Silver linings. Still annoying to lose a 50-50. He's got so much chaff. I really like it. It's a good start. I think the Mustangs are a good pickup as well. His only problem with having this much chaff is it's kind of pushing me into Vulcan already. Yeah, I'm really thinking about Vulcans now. Does he have armorized tanks? Ugh, can't click on them. Yes, he does. Okay, it doesn't really change the fact that we need Vulcans. It just means that I need to think about Scorching Flames as an upgrade, in case we need to punch through armor. Vulcan Phoenix. It's a classic because it works. Less good into Overlords, though. Come on, free unit Vulcan. Come on. Aww. Intelligent Arclight as well to taunt me. But no, we're not doing Arclight carry. He's Speed Specialist, so he can go double speed and have blazing fast crawlers. Let's go heavy armor on a Vulcan. That'll make him too big to fail. Like we were told the banks were in 2008, right? Which side is the most chaff? I'm thinking this side. Just a shame our high-level phoenix is on the opposite side. I was trying to convince myself I could play it here on the right, but no. Right, we've got a hundred left over. What do we do with it? We need to buy a unit so we don't fall behind the tempo. I have a bad habit of not protecting my giants. Remember the melting point game. So let's put some fangs beside him. Little bit further forward, so that melting point of Phoenix can get straight onto him. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what he's doing. He's balanced out his Mustangs and bought some more crawlers in the midline. That's good for us. Everything here dies to the Demon of the Flames. 
He's going deployment specialist, that's a great choice. But that means he's going for quantity over quality, whereas we've gone for a big giant. Oh, and there's a flank. Nice. Love to see it. It's punishing our lack of corner covering crawlers. Don't worry, I won't try and say it five times fast. However good of a tongue twister it would make. <laughs> Oral dexterity is a skill definitely worth having. Thank me when you're older. Right, let's focus on the game. Let's watch our Vulcan do his job with delighted abandon, burning our enemies to cinders. Oh yes, he really needs to get armor on his tanks or he's going to struggle. And this is why I tend to rush range of my Mustangs when I go for them. Ooh, we're losing this tower though, that's a problem. But I think we should have done enough on this other side. Even though he gets this lot, we just press on and get the tower on the far side. What would be fantastic is if the Vulcan gets a level up and then we can use intensive training on it and have a level 3 Vulcan with heavy armor. But that's fantasy Christmas land right now. Yeah, there's no way he levels up from a single round. Giants just need so much experience to level up. Whoa, he's barely even scratched. It's melting point or lose for our opponent, I think. Or Overlord, but Overlord answers everything. Since they increased his missile speed, they're even decent against crawlers now. Ooh, Stormclaws are not a bad answer either. And so are Scorpions. Why is it whenever I make a big play, the opponent gets the answers for free? <laughs> Same as my missile plays, I'm cursed. Do we take the rhinos? It's four rhinos is a lot. No, we take the scorpions. Expecting a scorpion versus scorpion mirror match. If he goes stormcaller, we can consider siege mode. So it'll be three across from the giant, who is four wide from the tower. Let's just buy the Vulcan and make the measuring easier. We're always going to want a second Vulcan, aren't we? Gap of three. Oh, and that'll answer the flank as well. Nice. Two birds with one stone always feels good. Let's give him his flanking fangs here as a bodyguard. Now we've got intensive training. What do we want to level up? You guys have already earned it. Double the stats for half the price. Hmm, which of these phoenixes did the most damage? No. Let's level up one of these scorpions, particularly if we're expecting a mirror match. He's going to have to face this lot. And his Vulcan doesn't have armor, so he's more at risk of getting damaged. There we go, that's a pretty good turn, let's see what he's picked. No flank on the opposite side. Scorpions as well, and he's got range on both the Scorpions and the Mustangs, interesting. Good choices on both counts, I think. Hopefully this guy can still punch up. Fighting into range is hard though, but we should be okay, because our Vulcan provides better chaff clear. Nice, that's the flank squashed. Has disrupted our formation though. And man, Scorpions take forever to turn. Has he taken armor his tanks? Not yet. He probably won't know there's scorpions on the board, because they just punch straight through it. Right, we need to clear these mustangs before our phoenixes die. Now that the Vulcan's out of commission, otherwise we'll never kill his scorpion. Oof, that's a lot of incoming damage. I'm glad he's level 2, but it's probably not going to be enough. Yeah, this side is doomed. Can our strong side bail us out? He gets this, and then these guys are going to drive across. Don't get distracted, no! Get to the tower! Whew, that was close. If we hadn't killed the tower, we'd have lost our phoenixes. Right, ooh, he's gonna go giant hunter. But that's very slow on the tempo. We can just go supply specialist and get the same effect, without needing to rely on killing giants. Right, we need to solve his mustang problem. Even when the Vulcans are dead, which means we have to take firebomb. And let's drop another one in the middle where there's no scorpion. I don't like having an odd number of them, but we need it. An odd number means a single javelin can kill off your entire chaff clear on one side, which can lose you the match in the late game. Hmm. I think we match this in case he drops some phoenixes or a wraith behind it. Oh god forbid an overlord. He's gonna missile again. So I have gaffed by not saving 100 for the tower upgrade. We're gonna have to push. And there we go, our phoenixes now have more than 3000 health, so they will survive. Well, the missile from the skies, anyway. Let's put a shield here, just in case he tries to pick off all the chaff. And give his school an easy time killing our Vulcan. <laughs> Unlucky dude. Predicted both the missiles. I know that feeling. He's gonna be shocked when these guys survive. But wait, last time it worked! He's cheating! <laughs> I don't know why I envisage our opponent as a lemming, raising his fist to the skies, screaming his defiance to the gods. It's probably just me. But anyway, here we go. Oh, I thought he was targeting these guys. Whoops. So much for matching his crawlers. <laughs> Accidents happen. Don't play with fire, kids. That stuff burns. Oh, as a kid, I melted the pulp of one of my fingers onto a light bulb. 
I'm glad light bulbs are LEDs nowadays. Much more efficient. It used to be that 90% of the energy put into a light bulb would come out as heat. But now the LED ones are much more efficient. Speaking of efficient, look at how fast we're going through these Scorpies with these Phoenixes. And our Vulcan is so tanky. Early health items are worth their weight in gold. Oh, he's struggling. He doubled down on Scorpions and it's not worked. What's he gonna do? Oh, he's gonna take Overlords. Well, so do we. They're just so good, you can't pass them by. I can't think of many board states where you're not happy to have two Overlords drop into your lap. Because even if they get counted, you can still use Photon Emission and get vines. And they're amazing combatants themselves. A quick throwback to Magic the Gathering players, I would say that Overlords right now are Dream Trolls from the Theros block. Editing the air in here, because people want to that off the top of their head. They were great in combat, a really good support piece, and they were flying with a big body. Often used as endgame finishers. Yeah, we're pushing for the win, let's take temporary range. We don't need to push plus 200, we've got a massive HP advantage. So we can convert that to an economic advantage by not pushing when he pushes. But it is okay to push for the win if you think we've got lethal on tempo. It's just I don't think I need to here. Huh? Right, let's see what he's got for. Votes of his own, who would have guessed? And he's gone range for combat prowess. Ooh, we're about to see do combat boats beat support boats or do support boats beat combat boats? <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, he's got a pair of anti-missile devices as well. He's come prepared. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. We've seen this play out a million times. Will this time be different? Well, the world still burns, but it's a smouldering fire, not a raging fire. But we've still got fire down in front of everything. Can't complain. The world will smolder. It doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? Those boats are shooting from a long way away. Is he aerial? No, he's not. He's speed. It's just range enhancement and the camera angle, I guess. But I swear my overlords never shoot as far as that. Come on, Phoenixes. Yes! Wanting to buy anti-outgrade for Phoenixes. Ooh, there we go. We sunk his battleship. All his boats are down. Now it's just the cleanup and then we can put our feet up. Ooh, yeah. Good job. GG. Sorry, dude. I'm sure that felt horrible on the receiving end. Ah, typing. As the priest said for the nun. Why is it so hard? Ooh, so, yeah, all from the start being a little bit better. These little arc lights, I don't know why I forgot to buy them last game, but they make all the difference, just helping us clear the chaff. It's two little arc lights, all you need. As soon as we saw he was going heavy chaff, we just take Vulcan with incendiary bomb, and he's just scuppered. Even though he made the right pick with the overlords, I don't think range was the answer. I think cannon would have been better, actually. He's already got the scorpions with range, so he doesn't need these guys sitting so far back. He wants more damage faster, not just further back. You're never going to be able to outrange the phoenixes. I've already got range on them. Um, whew, we were double supply. He was giant hunter. He was killing a few of our giants, but it didn't pay off. He'd only had it for two rounds. He's only paid out one round at most. I don't think it was worth it, to be honest. Hmm. I didn't go for shields on my fangs, even though that's my normal answer to scorpions. But he already had the tanks as well. And the Mustangs. So it didn't feel like it would change the fight much. So there was no way Fangs would provide the front line for us. Instead I was relying on the beef from the Vulcans to hold the front line. With their massive HP pools. This heavy armour. With level 2 he just tanked everything. Those two Scorpions couldn't kill him. Once again, Overlord with Photon Emission is so much value. As long as your stuff is getting hit relatively early in the round. Within that 16 second shield bubble. It's so much value. It effectively halves all incoming damage. It's not great on chaff, because it's going to get one shot anyway. Maybe we should have gone Subterranean Blitz on the Crawlers for that multiplicative defense bonus and avoiding being burnt up in our own fire. I'm glad we had the range of the Phoenixes this time, so they weren't just walking into his own overlords. Two sets of Mustangs, it's probably not worth teching them. But I can understand why he did it, and I probably do the same as well. You're just hoping it keeps them alive in the face of the Vulcans, and without it they feel doomed. Oh yeah, there was one weird round where this Vulcan fired its firebomb this way. But then in the final round it fires it forwards. I, I don't understand it sometimes. Maybe the shields were too close and it targeted the shield? I'll have to go back and look at the footage on that one. Editing DR in here. Yes, it was because the shield was too close. Um, whew. Scorpions didn't do a lot for us here. Being honest, 50 kills, it's all chaff. 75 kills. It was more, uh, I expected him to go scorpions. So we take scorpions as well to balance it out. And protect our Vulcan. Maybe we should have gone range on them. 
but we only had two scorpions. I didn't want to overinvest in them. Though we did take range of the phoenix, and we only had two of them. <laughs> I am a hypocrite. I think it was more important for the phoenixes when they're fighting the overlords. Sorry, it took me a moment to think about that one. I don't think the score line does our opponent justice here. I think he played very well. A slight misposition with the wide tanks to begin with gave us the opening and the momentum to push ahead and get our giants on board first, and the giants are what decide the end game. Anyway, let's see how much combat power we've gained or lost. Nice, 1200 combat power, so he's an experienced player. But 3 MMR, so you're probably looking at 1200-1300 MMR, which is still respectable and above average. Never let a number define you guys, be it the bank statement, your MMR, or your ELO, your rank, your gear score. None of it matters. Who you are as a person matters the most. That said, I'm happy I'm fourth in the tournament right now. See, I told you I was a hypocrite. <laughs> well thank you for watching as always i hope this was easier viewing than the last game do let me know what mistakes i made because i'm sure i made a few and i'll see you tomorrow for the next round